Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. For today's video, as you guys can see by the title down there, we are talking about the Menendez brothers. I went down the rabbit hole of TikTok and there was a couple months ago, um, there was a cool like movement and you would stumble upon so much um, of like uh, videos about the Menendez brothers and kind of like looking at their case and a lot of fans of them were like over TikTok if you're like on the true crime side. Um, so it kind of like got my attention and I've been like researching and not sure I'm not sure in this one because so many details and I don't know a lot of opinions I just I, I'm not sure about this one so please please leave down below kind of like what your, what are your thoughts about this case I do want to introduce you to my new puppy say hi <laughs> um, she's just like three and a half months so she's a little bit shy uh, but yeah, I adopted her on Saturday, this past Saturday. Um, so like when you guys are seeing this, it's been a week. Um, and I love her. I love her so much. She's so cute. And before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe and the little button down there. And let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about the Menendez brothers, uh, Lyle and Eric Menendez, and how they brutally killed both of their parents now my screen is here I'm a little bit out of practice from filming so if I like look here it's because I have my notes there so Joseph Lyle Menendez was born on July 10th 1968 he's the older brother and Eric Gallen Menendez was born on November 27th 1970 Jose Enrique Menendez was born on July 6th 19 44 in Havana, Cuba. So in 1960, when Jose Enrique was only 16 years old, he actually came to the United States and he actually um, came to the University of Illinois with a swimming scholarship. And this is actually where he met Mary, um, Kitty, by the nickname of Kitty. And they actually got married in 1963. They decided to move to New York to begin their new married life. Jose was only 19 years old and Mary was actually 21. After Lyle was born, Kitty, which the mom, I'm gonna keep referring her, keep referring to her as Kitty, because everybody knew her by that. When Lyle was born, Kitty actually decided to quit her teaching job and the whole family actually moved to New Jersey and this is where Eric was born on November 27th. Jose, the dad, decided to change careers from um, accounting to being an executive, corporate executive uh, for the RCA record labels. According to those who knew Jose and Kitty, they were actually very concerned about the family family's social image. And from what we know from the Menendez brothers, there was there was a lot going on behind closed doors. The brothers' friends actually commented that they were both actually really close, Lyle and Eric but their personalities were actually quite different. Lyle was often described as aloof and witty and on the other hand Eric was described as sensitive and quiet. Lyle was actually described as having a stronger personality than Eric. Both of them attended Preston Elementary School and Lyle was actually enrolled at the Princeton, Princeton University. In 1987, the family actually packed their bags and moved to California where Jose was gonna start a new job and Eric was gonna attend the Calabasas High School. Jose ended up with a job at Live Entertainment and he would earn up to five hundred thousand dollars a year which is so much money like so so much money 
So they were living the good life. They they were living the good life. He was actually the president and exec uh, chief executive there. He was actually often described as a ruthless person by his co-workers. Um, a lot of people actually didn't quite like him because he was just he was just mean and rude. It's actually known um, that he also had multiple affairs during his marriage with Kitty and that Kitty was actually aware that these were going on. One of, one of Jose's greatest flaws was his insecurity for being Latino or Hispanic. He was actually kind of embarrassed that he was from Havana, Cuba. It is said that he would often make fun of other Latino co-workers that he had. He would also encourage his co-workers to call him Joe instead of Jose, which was his actual name. Like I said, with Jose and Kitty being so concerned for their family image, at just 14 years old, Lyle's hair was actually becoming very, very thin. Um, so they actually um, forced him to wear a toupee, toupee, I'm pretty sure like a, you know, hair implant thingy that they would put. Um, and the thing is that there was a point also that not even Eric knew that Lyle was wearing one, which, you know, as friends and family would describe that they were extremely close. This was really surprising to read that he, or to know, that he didn't actually know that Lyle was wearing a toupee. So little by little, um, Lyle and Eric started hanging out with not such good influence people and they started getting into trouble here and there. One night when they were hanging out with friends, they decided that they were going to go rob a friend's house and steal what was inside the parents' safe. One of Eric's friends actually had a combination for the safe so they were actually able to steal jewelry that it was inside the safe from doing this it was noticeable that you know Kyle and Eric were getting kind of like an adrenaline rush from doing this and they were planning on robbing another house now when they were planning on doing the other uh, robbery um, Jose's dad got a hold of the information because a third friend um, that was not invited to rob the second house uh, was not invited so he ratted them out and Jose was not mad so when Jose found out about the robberies he actually forced Eric to plead guilty because uh, Lyle was about to enter Princeton University and remember they're family image was everything so Eric ended up pleading guilty and he ended up only doing just uh, community service so alongside doing his community service Eric also started going to therapy after all of this and uh, the family actually moved into a four million dollar house that was on Beverly Hills the house had six bedrooms, a courtyard, a guest house, and a tennis court. And they really thought they had the perfect life. Although with everything in their life, Eric and Lyle kept um, having this feeling that anything that they would do in their life was not um, enough for Jose. So a day before the murders, um, the family goes on their yachts and they're having a family day. They were going to go fishing, but it is said by the people that were on the boat, like the captain, and I think there was like another person there, um, the family did not talk to each other at all that day. They were literally on their own corner on the boat and they did not exchange a word uh, for the few hours that were out, they were out in the sea. And that was a little strange, you know, um, because of the appearances and, you know, they tried really hard to keep up with their, you know, perfect family that they had. So on August 20th, 1989, Lyle and Eric come back. 
from hanging out and they find their parents murdered on their couch. Obviously, Light immediately went to call the police and I'm going to insert the recording of the um, 911 call now. Obviously, Lyle sounds like he's in a lot of distress and he's confused as to, you know, what they're seeing, you know, their parents murdered. Police actually took a long time to come to the house. And when police got there, um, they actually said that obviously, again, Lyle and Eric were in a lot of stress. You know, they just saw their parents' bodies lifeless on the couch. Now, when police um, actually questioned Lyle and Eric, they told police that they had left their house on the evening of August 20th and that they had gone to the movies to watch the new James Bond movie, License to Kill. When they saw that the lines were long, they decided to watch the Batman movie instead. After this, they said that they went to the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium and they wanted to um, attend the Taste of LA that it was going on that day. Then after there, they decided to uh, contact a friend that they were going to actually meet at uh, the Cheesecake Factory. They say that they arrived before midnight and when they got home, they actually noticed that the front gate and the front door were open so like they were not locked and that in the den on the couch they found um, a half-eaten bowl of fresh berries and next to that it was the bodies of their parents now it is important to mention that the brothers were not checked by the police or their cars <laughs> Um, they were just obviously they asked for their statement, but they were not checked for any like gun residue or even like like I said their cars were not checked for Anything they literally just asked a few questions and let the brothers go They were you know according to the police reports and everything they were not suspects at the moment um, because of their you know their alibis and what they said that they were doing you know we know now that if they would have check their cars they would have found the guns that they had used to murder their parents now during the interviews uh the the police interviews and uh, now during the police interviews lila and eric actually mentioned that they would think that it was related or their the killings were related to organized crime because they were sure that his dad they were sure their dad was incriminated into some like mafia stuff. According to the detectives, they did say that, you know, it was a bloodbath, that it was very, it looked very, very personal, the way that they were killed. And usually within like the mafia and organized crime, um, they're pretty like clean about it, the way that they murder like victims. And so, you know, that was kind of like a flag right there, but nothing came about that. Jose and Kitty did have funerals and um, they had funerals both in California and back um, in New Jersey and this is where it gets super interesting because even if they wanted to hide the fact that they had killed their parents their actions that they took next are gonna be like well you're a like why did you why did you go and do this so 
the brothers moved out of the family's Beverly Hills 4 million mansion that they lived obviously because you know they killed their parents there and they actually moved in to very expensive hotels um, until they finally um, began leasing uh, a pair of condos that were like next to each other and of course the apartments have plenty of room for parties and so they had a lot of parties Eric started spending a lot of their money and uh, he actually bought a Rolex watch um, as well as very expensive clothes um, and he actually spent thousands of dollars gambling which he obviously lost he also decided to hire a coach a tennis coach for about 60 grand a year because he wanted to become a tennis professional player he would actually practice up to 10 hours a day and he actually did fly to the Middle East to actually compete meanwhile Lyle did return to Princeton University uh, but he actually did not attend any classes and he decided to focus on business ventures that he wanted to have as well as shopping sprees in the New Jersey New York area he actually hired a team of bodyguards to make sure that he was safe I guess and he would go on shopping sprees up to like forty thousand dollars just buying very 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 expensive clothes and I did hear in one of the videos when I was doing research that there was a point I think when he like turned 16 or something um, that he wanted to get a Porsche, Porsche as his car um, and obviously the dad didn't buy it for him so you know now he had the money so he went and bought a 60,000 Porsche car for himself he also purchased a popular uh, restaurant that was by Princeton University um, and it was called the Chuck's Spring Street Cafe for $550,000 and renamed it for Mr. Buffalo's um, after its spicy wings. He was actually hoping for that to become kind of like a franchise chain. Even quoted his mom and said, um, it was one of my mother's delights that I pursue a small restaurant chain and serve healthy food with friendly service. He told uh, the student newspaper in one of the interviews. And this was actually the first business venture that Lyle pursued in a umbrella of a company called the Menendez Investment Enterprises. So this boy had big dreams after killing his parents. So now don't get me wrong, you know, the brothers didn't spend six months, um, you know, apart from shopping and just, you know, spending the money that, that was not theirs um, just on that you know um, they actually started going to therapy they started going to therapy with Dr. Jerome Osio um, and it was in those sessions that it would eventually lead to their arrest it is worth mentioning though that um, Kitty was actually also going to therapy and she was you know continually working through her own issues um, but in one of the sessions, um, she did mention that she was actually terrified of her sons and that he actually thought that they were sociopaths. And so she also mentioned that she would sometimes at night lock herself in her bedroom with a gun because she was so terrified of them. Which, why didn't she speak up about it? I don't know. They had so much money that they, I'm pretty sure they couldn't find the resources, but you know gotta protect that family image because that's the most important thing i think they got it all wrong obviously the stress of keeping this huge secret um and you know what they had done eric was actually um going to therapy as well and um in one of his in one of eric's sessions he actually confessed to his therapist of what they had done and this is where everything unfolds so Eric you know spilled the tea he told the therapist you know everything that they had done to um, their parents um, at this point um, OCL is the doc the therapist um, mistress she was actually listening in and um, she went to the police and she was the one that told them what um, Eric had told the therapist 
Now, Lyle was actually arrested on March 8th, 1990 in Beverly Hills. And Eric was actually playing a tennis tournament in Israel and he actually voluntarily decided to come and uh, he actually got arrested on March 11th. When both brothers are being um, interviewed, they actually confess that they have bought the guns on August 18th. So that's about a couple of days before they actually went on and murdered their parents. And they actually bought the guns at a big five sports good um, store that was here in San Diego, which obviously, you know, it was about a hundred miles from their home um, back up in Beverly Hills. Now, when they were um, being interviewed, um, they shared the details of what had happened. And they said that that day, on August 20th they opened fire to their parents that were sitting down in their den using the guns that they had bought in prior it is said that Lyle did not hesitate to actually shoot and that Jose did die right away uh, but Kitty unfortunately he she um, didn't and they continued to shoot her and even the fact that you know she didn't die right away and they just kept shooting her like i can't even imagine like in the like frenzy that they were at and they were just just kept shooting um and then she actually they kept shooting and they ran out of uh, bullets and um they had to run outside to reload their guns and when they came back um kitty was kind of like trying to like pull herself and she actually slipped and um, in her own blood when they came back and then Eric actually shot her twice. She was actually shot a total of 10 times um, and her face was actually unrecognizable and uh, Jose was actually shot six times and had a hole in the back of his head. Both brothers actually pleaded not guilty because there was a possibility of them actually getting the death penalty. Um, so it was actually obviously a shocking case um, and it got stalled for years and years and because Eric was going to therapy um, he you know he was being recorded um, a judge actually ruled portions of the tapes of the brothers therapy sessions admissible as evidence so you know they when they were in therapy um, they Eric did confess so they had that as proof for the evidence but the battle of the tapes drag out for 30 months. Um, like I said, this case was just stalled for years till the Supreme Court uh, of California intervened and both brothers were indicted on December 7th, 1992 and um, they were tried for murder separately. Now in July of 1993, it was announced that Kyle and Eric had actually murdered their parents in self-defense it was said that they had endured years and years of sexual abuse from their father Jose now the first trial started on July 20th 1993 and although both brothers were being um, tried um, for the same murder they were running at the same time but separately the crazy thing is one of the crazy things here is that this whole trial and this whole case was actually broadcasted on national television and this was actually something that it was kind of common back then in the 90s um, where trials and just cases were tri were televised and cameras were actually um, allowed inside the courtroom now according to the defense the brothers actually had decided days prior to the murders, they decided that they were going to confront their father and they had told him that if the abuse did not stop that they were going to go public and ruin his reputation and they feared that his retaliation would be to kill them and that's why they bought guns. Um, what I'm imagining is that, you know, they bought them as to keep them in case something did happen but then, you know, they went and murdered their parents which is what doesn't make sense it doesn't add up now if you want to I'm gonna link down below um, a couple of the interviews um, from court um, about them talking about the abuse it is very graphic um, and I don't I don't want to insert it because you know overall it's a graphic case but 
Um, I am going to leave it down in the description box. And um, basically, Eric and Lyle describe the abuse and what Jose would make them go through. In one of the trial interviews, they were actually asked um, what was the originating cause of them killing their parents. And Eric said that it was him telling Lyle that their dad was um, molesting him as well. And that was kind of like the tipping point because neither of them knew that their father was molesting both of them. Now, Lyle did talk about when the abuse um, started happening for him, and he mentions that his dad, or it began um, after his sports practice, and he would come home, or they would come home together, and that his dad would, you know, guide him to, his dad would guide him on what to do. And like how to do it. I mentioned how his dad would tell him that he didn't want to hurt him and that he loved him. But on the other side, if he were to tell anybody about their little secret, um, that bad things were going to happen to him. Um, which is, it's so sad. And I know that it happened for years, so I can see that anger build up because you know, you know, a parent doesn't do that kind of stuff with their children. Now, unfortunately, the story was impossible to corroborate because obviously, you know, they were dead. But by the time that their brothers had actually opened up about the abuse, um, the public had been hating them and just eating up, kind of like the rich boys and they wanted to kill their parents because they wanted to, you know, end up with their parents' money. Um, because information of how much they were gonna inherit, um, well, that was a lot of money. Um, the brothers were gonna inherit 14 million dollars um, that it was like on the on their estate the father's estate but then um, according to the dad's um, work he had a life insurance and that was five million so you know that's also kind of like a why they would do it as well if they wanted you know the um, the money but Watching the interviews and the testimonies, um, they must have paid, I don't know, like a coach because the way that they describe and the way that they cry and the way that they're just talking about the incidents and the things that, you know, their dad would do to them, it's just so detailed and graphic and just so much, um, so specific that it also makes you question like there must be some truth to this like it's just like i said unless they actually hired like a coach when they were spending all this money like a um actor coach or whatever acting coach because there's no way that they were just acting at least not in my opinion unfortunately even the brothers um descriptions of their fathers abuse earned them some mockery i'm gonna insert the clip from snl saturday night live the show that has been going on for years and years pretty sure you've heard you've heard of it um and they did like a skit of kind of like the trials let me ask you once again is it your testimony that you and your brother eric in fact had nothing to do with the murder of your parents jose and kitty menendez that's correct then can you tell the court who did murder your parents our other two brothers, Danny Menendez and Jose Menendez Jr. <laughs> now the jury of Eric actually deadlocked on Ju uh, January 10th, 1994 and Lyle's jury actually deadlocked again. And, and the jury in Lyle's case deadlock uh, two weeks later. And I had to actually, you know, search what that meant. And deadlock jury means that um, despite honest attempts, it, the jury um, is unable to reach a verdict by their required voting margin. But I can imagine that they get like a time frame of like, you know, by this time you have to have your decision as a jury. Um, and they didn't meet that. And so the judge declared mistrials for both. Now it wasn't until July 17th, 1996 that a third 
and final jury found the brothers guilty together. The whole process itself, like with the juries and everything, took about seven years. Now, the brothers were convicted of first degree murder and they were sentenced to two consecutive uh, life prison terms without the possibility of parole on July 2nd, 1996. Now, Pamela Bosnick was working as the deputy district attorney in the early 90s when this case was actually coming about. And she was actually assigned uh, to this case, which was the biggest case of her career. Now, in a rare interview, um, Pamela actually said that she didn't, she didn't buy the story back then and that she didn't buy it now. And she said, I am 100% sure that they fabricated their defense. She said, I am not 90% sure, I am 100% sure. Now, obviously, we, we don't know why she's 100% sure because that's one hell of a statement to make. Um, and, you know, how could she be so confident? She said that um, she was told during the trial uh, that the brothers would actually high-five each other, particularly after a good day in court where they would uh, be testifying. And she also mentioned that they would have five each other when they pulled it off. I'm sure that there are details that, you know, were never shared with the public. So there are details that may, you know, kind of lead her to believe that, you know, they were lying and they just literally did it for the money. Now, despite their request to be placed um, in the same prison, um, they were actually separated and both have gotten married behind bars. Lyle actually got married twice. Um, his first wife was a former model and his current wife is named Rebecca Sneed and she was a magazine editor turned attorney. And Eric is married to Tammy Sakuman. Lyle and Eric's reunion actually began when Lyle was transferred from the uh, Northern California Mules Creek State Prison to the San Diego R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility in February of 2018. Now, Eric had actually been at the San Diego facility since July 2013, but when Lyle was transferred in in February, they were both housed in different sections of the prison. Now, on April 4th, Lyle was actually transferred to Eric's housing site um, in the facility, and in that facility, the inmates had the ability to interact with each other. Um, so now they were able to see each other and every day they had meals and they exercised together in the yard. Now, like I said, they're both incarcerated at the um, RJ Donovan Correctional Facility here in San Diego. Eric is 50 now and Lyle is 53. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and the little button down there thank you so much for everybody who has subscribed to my channel i know that i was gone for a bit and i apologize for that but i'm back uh have a good day and i'll see you guys in the next one bye